Hey cats, it's Ed, half marathon bud here. It's almost race time. My good friends Puma have invited me over to the Manchester half marathon. Today I have a preview of the race for you. Gonna go through some of the shoes, some of the kit, some of my approach. I've put the training in and the hard work. How will I do? Let's have a look. So almost there, October the 15th is the Manchester Half Marathon. Really looking forward to my first trip to Manchester in an absolute age. Bit of luck really, I've managed to get a hotel that's reasonably close to sort of like the first or second miles of the race. It's a real boon. So I can get some much needed rest the day before. Really looking forward to racing again actually regardless of the actual distance. This one's nice and flat too, so there's a really good chance for a PR. I'm in the red wave B, so I'm a little further back. I think there's several waves that are just ahead of me. I've got no problems with six degrees C. I seem to run a lot better when the weather's that bit cooler. It has been very warm actually the last few weeks of my training. Unseasonably warm actually, it really isn't right. I shall be bringing an old fleece to discard at the start line to keep me warm up till that point. That is a lesson learned from the Brighton Marathon earlier this year. I spent far too long shivering before that race and lost a lot of energy before I even got going. From what I can gather of the actual course map, it's a blast from the start up toward Deansgate. I think you're heading up towards the city centre there for the first two miles then back down the carriageway road for about five miles to Stretford. Then you go into Sale at some point there, and then you go across the water, back up towards that carriageway at about nine miles, up to 10 miles near Stretford tram station. Now, the last three miles, obviously, of a half marathon race is the absolute best part. I'll keep telling myself that. We head through Chawton cum Hardy, back up to the finish near Old Trafford. After that, I'll probably be somewhat tuckered out and in need of some light refreshment and sustenance. Hopefully there's a pizza place nearby or something. I shall give it a good shot and see what I can do. I've been training to a regime where I'm gonna aim for about six minutes 50 per mile, which should bring me in under one hour 30. I think like a plan B will be something like 132, 133, perhaps if I'm just not quite up to it, but I think this is probably the fittest that I've ever been in my entire life. I really want to beat that long running target as well and just kind of put it to bed and sort of forget about it until I try and get it lower. Yeah, anyway, I think there's only about 140 foot of elevation gain here. I've been searching around for a more accurate figure, but I do think this is one of the more flat half marathon routes around. I think Salisbury half marathon had about 151. That was like a two lap course. I don't remember there being any significant sort of incline there whatsoever. I think it's even flatter than the Salisbury one. So it's an absolutely fantastic opportunity. I think the Bristol half marathon route was about 233. So this one really should be a walk in the park in terms of elevation. The temps are looking good then. There's no rain as well, which is quite insane, really. Everybody keeps telling me Manchester can be a little bit wet. There can be a lot of rain. There's going to be very little of that on the race day. I'm still considering what to wear for the event. It might be that I take along some arm sleeves or it might just be suck it up and wear the vest and keep the fleece on till you know, just before the start of the race. Within like a mile or two anyway, you're always cooking when you're going at race pace, aren't you? So I don't think I'll feel it an awful lot. And it's only 13.1 miles, so yeah. Easy. Looking back on previous times, six minutes, 57 per mile. I had one hour, 31.49 in Bristol. That was back in like 2021 now. And a lockdown time trial of one hour, 30.19. And that was with loads of elevation as well. It's about like, 600 foot or something that time trial i think it was about two or three degrees it was freezing out there but it did seem to be able to elevate me to a slightly higher more sustained pace i think i'm in with a real shout of breaking it this time feeling the best i've felt training's gone superbly well with absolutely no illness whatsoever lots of consistency and touch wood touching the wood no injuries or issues so hopefully i'll arrive at the start line in the best condition I can be. Bags are packed, the shoes are ready. Ah, the, the shoes. 
So I'm going to take a couple of pairs over with me, but I'm 95% certain that I'm going with the Fast R Nitro Elite. It's a shoe I've wanted to test out over the half marathon distance for ages now, and this is probably one of my best opportunities. Certainly broken this pair in. They feel really nice now. They've sort of flexed a little bit, I suppose. But I have made a couple of modifications to these to improve them a little bit. I have subbed out the standard laces that they come with stock for some out of the Deviate Nitro 2. They're a little bit fatter. They're a little bit more flexible as well they just seem to stay tied a little bit better here and because of the softness they sort of come down rather than sort of sticking out and i think the lengths are a little bit more on point as well with these just seems to create a better lock around the top of my foot just finding that with these other laces the fit is that bit more consistent don't worry i will be cleaning them up a little bit they do need a bit of a spruce now the other thing i have changed with these shoes i've removed the stock insoles i've actually put some crushed up p-backs insoles in there they come stock with some quite thick puma foam insoles i just feel these are making the fit of the shoe a little bit more glove like there's a little bit more squash underneath is just making this sort of eva section here of the shoe that little bit more forgiving i think it's pretty subtle really but the one thing that it does affect is the actual toe box room here just makes me feel like i've got more of a race fit in the shoe so it's just tuning the shoe up really to get it to fit my foot perfectly and it really does feel like it's a glove now it's a foot glove. So I'll get them cleaned up with the rejuvenator later on today, get them race ready. I think it takes them up to about 100 miles as well. So I'll be able to sort of do a race review and a 100 mile review on the shoe all together. A bumper episode, you could say. Going with some high five energy gels. I think it's the orange ones that I've ordered. Amazon had some crazy deal on them and I couldn't quite resist. I like those because they're quite viscous. It's almost like a drink, really. And I hate carrying bottles and stuff around with me. Whenever I try drinking water, whenever I'm racing, I tend to just spill it all over my face. And I always feel really bad about like chucking bottles away that have got loads of water in them. And during the COVID times as well, you couldn't even like offer someone the water because they probably probably be looking at you like why are you trying to give me that the high five energy gels are nice and thin they don't take up too much space of course i'll have my trusty flip belt with my phone as well the essential possessions i am going to take the gopro with me this time on a short stick i'm not going to take the big one i just find that a little bit intrusive i suppose to other people especially when you're racing and you've got loads of other participants I just feel it's taking up a little bit too much space. What I tend to do is get one of those high gi bands and kind of wrap it around my hand and then I can store the GoPro in there and I don't have to worry about putting it on my person. No headphones this time, I just want to absorb the support from around the course. It's supposed to be pretty good as well. Everyone keeps telling me there's loads and loads of people come out to support the run. I will take a pair of the Deviate Nitro Elite 2 with me as well. They'll be my backup pair in case I feel I just don't want to run in the fast star for whatever reason. These are absolutely box fresh and they do feel great as well. Bizarrely though, the other shoe is blue. It's up there, in fact. As I said, no rain to worry about. It's a closed off course, so no cars to actually dodge or be beeped at by. Not many of the events in the West Country are closed roads. Normally they're sort of partially closed for a little while. Lots of straight sections here, very few double backs. And there's a few of those in that Bristol course which really get you. When you've got some momentum going and then you've got to completely double back, it really does put the kibosh on things. I'm hoping to do some type of shakeout run on Saturday afternoon. I'll place some information up via the different social handles. In fact, you can get me on like Instagram or Strava. Check out the community section of the channel as well for more information on that a little closer. If you're running, let me know your plans and your targets for the race. I'm really excited to hopefully meet some of the viewers of the channel at this super event. Really, really up for it. Let's go. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments. Musical interlude time. Released back in 2004 from a basement on the hill, Elliot Smith. Whenever you listen to this album, it's hard not to feel a little bit sad that Elliot Smith didn't get to produce more wonderful music for us. Taken way too early, he had some fantastic musical ideas and wonderful singing and guitar playing. Songwriting of just a different level. Nobody else was quite like that guy. From a basement on the hill was 
finished off and released sadly after Elliot had passed away and that doesn't stop there from being some absolutely fantastic very memorable tunes here a fond farewell reminds me of some of his earlier material there quite poppy and Beatles like in its delivery the track a passing feeling sounds like it perhaps could have come from his uh, XO album from a few years back there's some more rocky type tracks on this one as well a bit more rough around the edges some distorted guitars and sort of flailing drums it does make you remember just how versatile Elliot Smith was in terms of a songwriter there's some wonderful guitar tones on this one too obviously using that gibson 330 that he had and i think he had a rickenbacker as well at one point there's definitely tones that are very like a rickenbacker on here from a basement on the hill by elliot smith go and check it out thanks for tuning in people it's always appreciated hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up like hopefully i'll see you in manchester my name's ed bud and i'll be seeing you